November 9th, 1938. Germany has already undergone five years of Hitler's anti-Semitic brainwashing. Jews are no longer considered citizens and are deemed a threat to the purity of the so-called Aryan race. All interaction between Jews and non-Jews is strictly forbidden. My mother always said to me, don't talk to strangers, don't tell them you are Jewish. Crippling legislation, known as the Nuremberg Laws, are put in place to drive the Jews out of Germany. Beatings and public humiliation is commonplace. Very often I came home with bruised elbows and bruised knees and bleeding noses and they beat us up. Things got progressively worse. The Nuremberg Laws were, of course, were in effect since 35. Uh, my dad was kicked out from the medical practice. Some Jewish doctors were able or allowed to practice only on Jewish patients. Uh, everybody was discharged. Nobody want, everybody had to leave. Meanwhile, in Paris, a Jewish teenager named Herschel Greenspan can no longer bear to witness the suffering of his people. And on the 7th of November, 1938, he walks into the German embassy and shoots a Nazi officer named Ernst von Rath. It was meant to be an act of protest. But for Hitler and his men, it was an opportunity. It was waiting to happen. The Nazis were just waiting for an opportunity to hurt the Jews. And it was an excuse for the Germans to do what they did on that night. As the news of the shooting spreads, SS General Reinhard Heydrich sends a secret telex to every state police office in Germany and Austria. Following the attempt of the life of Secretary of the Legation Von Roth in Paris, demonstrations against the Jews are to be expected in all parts of the Reich in the course of the coming night. We looked out of the window, and I remember my father saying, turn out all the lights. I don't want anybody to see our shadows. And we looked out of the window, and there was a great big bonfire in the middle of the street. This was 38, exactly 10 years old, holding on to my mother's still life. Awful. So I went to the streetcar, and then where I had to transfer to the other streetcar, I realized that I would have to walk home at the end of the second streetcar, so I decided to take a taxi. I took the taxi, and on the way to my house, I saw a burning synagogue. Synagogues are to be burnt down, places of business and apartments belonging to Jews destroyed. Kristallnacht is the night where Jewish businesses were wrecked, synagogues were burned, Jewish men were arrested, and many of the homes were burned. Ten SR people in uniform came running up our stairs. They tipped over my mother's um, buffet, which is a china cross, onto the floor. They, they made, they hammered the, the, the axes, pickaxes into my father's leather chairs and the, into our dining room and they cracked up alone. They made a hammock out of our house. The pogrom is designed to appear spontaneous and unplanned. SS men across Germany and Austria are instructed to incite outrage over the assassination. They were just aching each other one and, and screaming at us and, and calling us dirty names, you Juden, you dirty Jew, to, to schmutzige Jud and to, to Schweinehund and all these horrible names. The Nazis had many sayings, but uh, one of them was Jude or let, let the Jews die like animals. The Jewish stores are looted, windows are shattered, and homes are broken into. They took out the towers from the shore, the benches from the shore, the, uh, the, the books, the forum, Everything conceivable, the glass and, and the crystal that they were screeching. 
and they made a huge, huge, huge bonfire in, in, in that garden between our house and the shul. Our synagogue was not burnt that night. It was the only one in Leipzig that was not because it was between two German businesses. The fire department stood around and tried to protect the adjoining buildings. They didn't want the fire to spread beyond the confines of the synagogue itself. They took everything out of the synagogue and made that great big bonfire. And I still remember people yelling, dancing, laughing around that bonfire. There was a lot of uh, partying, celebrating going on. The Jewish stores were being broken. Uh, windows were being broken there. It, it was a, an ugly scene. Regular policemen are ordered to intervene only if German property or life is at risk. Jews are dragged out of their homes and into the streets, where they're arrested, assaulted, or murdered. One of these SR people from, our, from that bonfire in the back of our must have taken a piece of wood or a piece of bench and threw it into our house at the bottom, and it caught on fire. So you can you imagine, we were upstairs, we looked out onto the street here, and there must have been two, three, four hundred people with fists and hammers, come on down, you, come down, you dirty Jew, we'll, we'll, we'll beat you, we'll, 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 we'll make hack flies out of you. People did jump to their deaths and committed suicide and then so on and so forth. That, that happened. I still remember my uncle crying. His home had been burnt. The fear of, 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 of coming, looking out of the window and you see the fire underneath you. And, and, and I'm here, I'm holding on to my mummy and I said, Mudi, what, what's wrong with the tune? What, are we, what should we do if we go down? They're gonna, I, I don't know what's gonna happen. They're gonna, they're gonna, gonna kill me. If we stay here, we're gonna get burned alive. As many Jews as can be accommodated are to be arrested. The appropriate concentration camps are to be contacted immediately for the prompt accommodation of the Jews in the camps. Across the street, trucks gathering Jewish people at SR, the, the, the brown church, were bringing Jews down to take them to prison. And I saw some classes of kids being led by their teachers who were out to see what was going on, non-Jewish kids. 30,000 men are arrested for the crime of being Jewish. Early in the morning, my first recollection was of two or three Gestapo people making my father, getting my father, to, I guess, to get ready to get dressed, to my mother to get dressed. And they, as I woke up, they said, shh, quiet or to sleep some more, but I realized there was something awfully shaky there. And my father came over to me and he kissed me, and I said, I'm going away, take care of mommy. My uncle had a tailor shop, and the Gestapo came to his shop to look around. And my uncle had his little son with him, my cousin was five at the time, and they took whatever they wanted. And then they said to my uncle, is that all? And he said, yes. And my little cousin, who had been taught to tell the truth, said, but Tata, you didn't tell him about the other place that you have. And they, of course, took it. My uncle was taken to Sachsenhausen concentration camp. And my aunt received a cardboard box with his ashes. Those who were not arrested right away tried desperately to emigrate. But strict quota systems in the United States and elsewhere made it extremely difficult to obtain a visa, not to mention the ruinous cost. No one would open their doors to a passport stamped with a big red J. The population just, uh, they didn't give a darn, you know. You, you, you live your own lives, the fact that the Jews disappeared, what are those things? The night of broken glass left more than 1,400 synagogues in ashes. Thousands of Jewish homes ransacked, 8,000 businesses destroyed, and 400 Jews murdered. 
after Kristallnacht, there was damage done to the apartments. The Nazis insisted that the Jewish community pay for this. So they sent a tax collector to our house to uh, seize the furniture. One day I came home and the living room furniture and the dining room furniture was gone. We were forced to sell our house at a fire sale price. Kristallnacht marked a deadly turn in the Nazis' persecution of the Jews. Social and legislative harassment suddenly exceeded to physical brutality and destruction, paving the way for Hitler's final solution. Don't let anyone teach you how to hate. And don't you ever teach anyone how to hate. The 10th of November is the worst, worst, worst day of my life. And, oh, Hashem, thank God I'm here. For those who managed to escape afterward, Kristallnacht was a nightmare beyond reckoning. But for those who didn't, the nightmare had only just begun.